Who remembers when I said I was going to start posting regularly three months ago? Wouldn't be me. <laughs> Hi everybody, just a little precursor to the video as I just woke up. Just wanted to say sorry I've been gone, but I'm back and hopefully I'll start posting more regularly. I've just been busy expanding my platform in other ways. Anyways, <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching and let's just cut to me looking good. Well, hi, howdy ho. Um, <laughs> you might be saying, bitch, you have been gone for literally ever. And to that I say, yes, I have. Thank you for having me back. Today, as a little refresher, as a little hello, nice to meet you again, I'm going to be showing you guys some of my favorite items in my vintage collection, which includes clothes, um, hippie history items, and maybe a few records. So I'm just gonna, I have a little bit of a pile here <laughs> that I have uh, built up of just things that I want to show you guys, kind of like my current favorites, because although I love each of my children equally, and I call my clothes and my like hippie history items my children because I'm fucking nuts. Um, <laughs> although I love each of my children equally, sometimes I go through favorites, you know, like some that I wear more than others. It really just depends on what I'm feeling. So that is what I'm going to be showing you today. My current favorites. We good? Let's get into it. First thing I'm going to be starting off with is some of my favorite clothing that I've been wearing, like, non-fucking-stop. Um, I've gotten, like, a decent, not a decent amount, probably, like, a few new pieces since the last time I saw you, which was a couple of months ago. And I'm going to be showing you a few of my favorite of those items right now. And maybe some old items that you know and love. So the first one I'm going to be showing you, ooh, it's inside out. <laughs> Maybe I could have planned this beforehand, but whatever. <laughs> One moment. All right, <laughs> so this item that I'm showing you is this gorgeous, oh my, even just looking at it, it makes my heart hurt because it's so beautiful. And I know I'm not going to be able to wear it during the fall, which is like literally right now, but that hasn't stopped me from just putting on tights <laughs> and a sweatshirt like uh, my cardigan thing and wearing it all motherfucking day long. So this dress, it's, I don't know if you can see up close, but it's like a tie dye flower pattern. It's full of, it's, I think it's silk. Yeah, it's silk. It's, ugh. I mean, it is a dream and I will try it on for you right now. Do my heart. The next item I'm going to be showing you guys is this absolutely gorgeous, I can't even, are you seeing this shit? This is incredible, look at that detailing. This gorgeous, I believe it's from 1968 dress. Oh. But it also could look like it's from the 70s. They didn't really say what year it's from. But just based off of the collar, the collar, I'm feeling 68. Mm. Comment what you believe below. But look at this dress. Oh, it's incredible. And I will try it on for you now. Last clothing item I have to show. And the last clothing item. And the last clothing item I have to show you is this absolutely stunning vintage 1969 vest. And you may be saying, oh my god, Eva, that is such a cool vest. But it's not just a cool vest. <laughs> if you guys know the musical Hair, 
Um, this was actually used in the 1969, I believe, Sherbert? Schubert? I don't know how the, <laughs> how the theater is pronounced. I'll put it somewhere. Um, Schubert? Sherbert? Anyways, it was in Chicago. <laughs> it was used in hair. <laughs> it was used in a production of hair. And I love it so much. It's so, look at the fringe. It's fucking incredible. And what I love is these little blue details. These little blue pieces of fringe in it. Because that to me shows that it really was used in the stage production. Because that blue fringe was made so that it would stand out from far away. You see what you see what they did there? That's kind of cool. And it came with this little sticker uh, that went on the clothing, and I just put it over like because the sticker made a stain. So I put it in a little button. I'm gonna be putting like a tie dye or a black backing in the button, but I just haven't gotten the chance to yet because I'm lazy. But I wanted it to be with it, so I found that a little cute piece of hippie history. So I will try it on for you now. of hair hippie history items i have here this book that i started hallelujah 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 and it is full of all of the vintage well i guess 60s historical items i have been collecting and it's super cool and i think i'm gonna be doing a tour of all of the stuff in this book like when you open it up we have an issue of the San Francisco Oracle. Whoosh. That's a little, I'm giving you a little peep see right there. Boom, boom, boom. Kind of like a peep show, but for weird hippie stuff. So the first item I'm going to be showing you inside of this book that I was super de duper pumped to get. Um, well, I guess I'll count this as two items. Mm, no. Okay, it's two items, but I, I'll count it as one item, if that makes sense. Because they both have to do with hair yes i know we just saw the hair vest and now we have both original playbills for hair off broadway i'm a little nutty about hair i'm not gonna lie so i will show you the first one the first one is the first ever playbill for should i do the youtuber thing where i like covered my i don't know i, I don't think my camera's good enough quality to focus so i think i'm good but this is the first ever playbill for hair. Um, hair originally debuted at the, I believe it was the Public Theater in New York City in 1967. And that is what I have here. Ha, ah, so cool. And what I have here is still off-Broadway hair. It moved theaters off-Broadway. So it went from the Public Theater to the Cheetah Theater, which actually was a nightclub. So I have the original playbill for the Cheetah Theater hair. And as you can see, there's a little thing that says opening night on it. That's right, opening night, motherfuckers. <laughs> Not to brag or anything. I mean, I'm just saying, like, what? Like, oh my God, but getting these, oh, it's so incredible. Like, I can feel the vibes from them. And they are pretty rare um, and kind of expensive. I got both for around a hundred some, a hundred and change each. But I got lucky on it because I've seen both of these go for 200 minimum. So I got very lucky. The next hippie history item that I'm super jazzed you could say to have. Let me find it. Oh, oh my god, there's so many! Ah! My life is so boring. <laughs> my life is so boring. Like, this is literally, like, the most exciting part of my day is going on eBay and finding hippie history items. Where did it go? Oh. Me when I lose it? Oh my god. Ah! The 
next item I'm showing you is not actually from the 1960s, although I'm pretty, I'm still pretty jazzed to have it, I'm not gonna lie. And that is a prop, as you can see it's a little bent, but like, beggars can't be choosers. A prop from the movie Almost Famous. It's actually a backstage pass for Stillwater that was uh, used in the movie. I'm not sure if there's any shots with this specific uh, patch in it or backstage pass in it. I really can't imagine that there is, but whew, that's a pretty that's a pretty nice uh, thing to have in my collection. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, now that I explained like three items to you, should I just like go through and show you the booklet really quick? I'm not gonna explain everything to you, but like just so you see what I have, cause I'm so excited about it and I got all these items like super recently because I just went on a shopping spree that I should not have gone on. I think I'm just gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna like sh scroll through my book and show you guys everything so you guys can just like see for yourselves what I have. <laughs> Actually, just kidding. I'm not going to show you guys everything because I really do want to make a separate video on it. So you're just going to sit here for these few things. That's it. So the last thing I'm going to do is show you the records that I got because um, I love these records. And yeah, let's get into it. First thing that we have is Jefferson Airplane Crown of Creation. Um, nothing much to say except Stan Jefferson Airplane. Ray Slick is the woman who changed my entire life, period, for real. Um, Lather and Crown of Creation are like two of my favorite songs of all time, so Lahayam. The next thing we have is, oh wait, literally me. <laughs> the next thing we have is Joe Cocker with a little help from my friends. I absolutely have been obsessed with this record forever. Margarine is one of my favorite songs. I say that about every song, but it's just the truth. Like, nothing but the best for my king. Next, and finally, we have Arlo. The things I would do to Arlo Guthrie. The things I'd let Arlo Guthrie do to me. Just kidding. Unless. <laughs> Long story short, um, this record has my favorite song by Arlo Guthrie on it, Meditation, Wave Upon Wave. It is one of the most underrated Arlo Guthrie songs. It is, in my opinion, one of the best Arlo Guthrie songs, or er, controversial. Uh, and it is incredible. I love it, I love it, I love it. Love this record, love all these records. And that is the end of the video. That only took forever to post. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope I will make more videos soon. If not, I, oops. <laughs> Me, when I'm the worst content creator. I love you guys. Have a good day. Mwah.